Why do I look like the illegitimate king of fantasy nerds today, you ask? Good question. In fact, I should be wearing a necromancer outfit for all the topic resurrecting I'm gonna do today. This goes beyond beating a dead horse. It's like bringing the horse back from the dead to beat it as a zombie horse until it expires again, then summoning the spirit of the horse only to call the Ghostbusters. <laughs> If you appreciate unique, high-quality jewelry, I think you'll like the sponsor of this video, Thorum. Mine is made of ceramic and ironwood with an inlay of synthetic fire opal in the center that shifts color depending on the light and sparkles. Looks super awesome in real life. Very comfortable too. Nice smooth finish and you can dial in what you need with the sizers. And there are all kinds of cool materials. Stone, meteorite, antler, whiskey barrel, even drag dragon bone, I was gonna say dinosaur bone. Dragon bone would be even cooler but hey, gotta work with what this planet has to offer, right? So I would highly recommend checking it out. Link to Thorum is in the description below. Wearing a sword on your back. This has been covered a lot, you know, ever since the early days of the YouTube sword community and whatnot. And uh, I just felt like digging it up again and, and adding a few more cents to it. Everybody has their own opinion and personal bias, of course. So depending on how you approach it, you may come up with a different conclusion. Like if you already approach it with the idea, well, this is stupid, why would you do that? Then you might half ass something, just strap a sword to your back and just demonstrate clumsily trying to reach for it and here, see, I can't draw it. So since then, there have been a number of videos demonstrating that it does work in a number of different ways. One is simply having a one point attachment and wearing the scabbard on the left side, on your offhand side, it's in case of a right-handed person. So if it's attached like this, you're able to pull the scabbard down and uh, then you have a little bit more room to draw it. There's still going to be some limit you know, as to the blade length, but uh, I don't want to go too much into detail of how it can be done. I just wanted to point out this is one option that has been shown. And of course, Shad's custom back scabbard is another option, uh, which works quite well. So it can be done. And with enough motivation and ingenuity, you can probably come up with other methods as well that also work. It's always good to keep in mind that just because you can do something doesn't necessarily mean you should. So is this a good idea? I don't think so, personally. To me, this seems like a solution looking for a problem, mainly, because there is nothing wrong with this, with the hip carry. I don't see any compelling reason to strap something to your back, with one exception, and we'll get to that at the end of the video. But generally, there is really nothing at all wrong with this. Um, sure, wearing a sword or any kind of weapon is not the most convenient comfortable thing in the world. You know, you can point out a number of things like it might, you know, wiggle around, it might get in the way here and there if you, you know, sit down, bend over, sprint, whatever the hell, do this and that and the other, all fine and good. But none of this is really a big problem. You know, like running, for example, like you can easily hold on to the scabbard. Chad made a point about that in particular. With well, a sword on the back, you can run with both hands free. Do you absolutely need to have both hands free? Not really. I don't think there's a problem. And depending on the suspension, it's not going to wobble around that much. And even if it does, who cares? <laughs> You're not gonna stumble over your own sword and fall down. And if you do, you shouldn't even be wearing a sword. And there are plenty of pros and cons either way. I'm not gonna go into every single one of them, but there are certain things that you can do as well with a sword on your back. For example, wear a backpack at the same time, which is why I made a video a couple of years ago about attaching a sword to the backpack. And I still think that's a pretty reasonable way to carry a longer sword. And you're able to slip out of the backpack, drop it, draw the sword. And that's kind of a good idea anyway to get rid of the extra stuff if you have to fight. For this video, I'm gonna focus on two things in particular that bother me the most about this. The first one being, you don't really have much awareness of your weapon. If it's here on your back, whether it's 
on your left or on your right shoulder. Say you're an adventurer, just minding your own business, you know, you're walking around or you're standing somewhere waiting, whatever, and somebody sneaks up on you and wants to steal your sword. They can quite easily, particularly with the back scabbard that's open on the side because they don't even have to draw it that far. Just a little bit and then they can just literally run off to the side with it before you have any chance to react to it because you, you're not really going to see too well what's going on there. Unless you just so happen to look in that direction, you're not going to be able to see it. Now, of course, anytime anyone sneaks up on you with the intent of doing you harm or stealing something from you, that's never a good thing. You know, this is also not a good situation to be in if it's on your hip. But this particular situation here, how is somebody going to snatch a sword off your hip? They would have to do it from the front where you can see what they do, or they would have to kind of reach around and even if you look elsewhere, you can still see from the corner of your eye, you can still see the movement. And even if somebody tries, it's much faster for you to try to prevent that because your hand is already right there. You know, either hand. You know, whatever you're doing, if, if your hands are up here or there, down there, it's just this, this is much faster to prevent somebody from, from trying to disarm you. Whereas up there, it, it, what are you going to do against that? You have to be aware of what happens to your weapon. You need to be in full control of it all the time. Also with a scabbard on your hip like this, you're able to adjust it depending on the situation. For example, if you're, if you're walking around and you're worried about this you know, banging against somebody else's scabbard, you can adjust it to hang more in front of you or more upright. And this is not an issue. You can still walk normally. In fact, you see this pretty often in historical depictions that they have the sword pretty far in front. Uh, this also allows you, by the way, to sit down, no problem. This practice side sword here can also illustrate that because it's a particularly long blade. So if this bothers you, you know, if this gets in the way or whatever, you can adjust it so that it points more down and you can still walk around. You know, it's, it might get a little bit in the way of the leg, but there are definitely options to adjust it. Like you can have it more on the side and, uh, you know, relatively close to vertical and you can walk around with this no problem whatsoever. And then when you need it, it's right there. You have more control over it. If you need to bend over or sit down or whatever, you can just temporarily shift it to be like this. You wouldn't really carry it like this, but that's the nice thing. You can shift it around any way you want. You can't really shift this around too much. I mean, basically you can just decide if you want to have it lower or higher and that's about it. Otherwise you can't really adjust it too much. So lack of awareness and control over the sword is my one big issue. The other has to do with vulnerability. Think about wearing armor, be it a breastplate or even a full suit of plate armor. If you reach up like this to draw your sword, what are you doing? You're exposing your armpit, which is one of the vulnerable spots when wearing armor because you can't have rigid plates here. The best you can have there is mail. So this is always going to be more vulnerable than the rest. It's particularly bad if you draw like this on the same side because then it's really exposed, but you're still doing it like this. You can try to mitigate this by pulling this down pretty far and then trying to draw like this. You're still doing it to an extent. There's something that just feels more solid, more martially viable about drawing like this. You know, in very close quarters, if somebody tries to grapple with you, you can strike them with the pommel like this and you, know, you can draw pretty tightly if you have to. And again, depending on the size of the sword, there are ways to draw it and keep the point pretty close to yourself. If you just look at the overall profile, which do you think looks more vulnerable? This or this? That. 
I was curious about the speed difference between the two drawing methods, so I tried it out. In both cases, I tried to do it as quickly as possible, so not half-assing the back draw to make it look bad, even though it still looks kind of bad. I'm grimacing here because of how frustrating it was to deal with the awkwardness while trying to be as quick as possible. Of course, with practice you can get a lot faster, but I also haven't practiced fast draw from the hip specifically. In both cases, by the way, I discarded particularly slow attempts. Drawing from the back, even under ideal conditions, just seems clunkier. I also tried the hip draw from a sort of surrender position to see how much of a difference it makes, and surprisingly very little, even though the hands are quite a bit further away from the hilt. The difference doesn't seem like much, it's just fractions of a second. But in practical terms, that's a noticeable difference. If we combine the two, we can see that the hip draw is always faster. And if you're aiming for the opponent's arm, which is an easy target here, that also interrupts the attack they were trying to do. And lastly, just for fun, the topic of coolness. That's something that people often point out about wearing and drawing a sword from the back. It's so cool. I don't really see the big appeal here. Now, obviously, coolness, you know, you can't exactly debate that any more than you can debate whose favorite color is correct. It's green, by the way. If you stand there, you're negotiating with somebody, maybe trying to convince them that it may not be the best idea to attack you. There's just something about this, about this kind of gesture, you know, like just kind of idly tapping the pommel or something like that, you know, or, you know, this sort of position. It just looks like somebody's confident, right? You can assume a position from which you can very quickly and easily draw, like you can have your, your hands here, for example, like this is... It's not an act of aggression, you don't have it on the sword, but it's pretty freaking close to it. Or you can just casually hook your belt, you know, effectively bringing your sword hand a lot closer that way. So there are things you can do to kind of more subtly bring your hand closer. This is the best you can do when it's on your back. You can kind of hook it into the strap maybe. That makes it a little bit closer. It's still a little bit more awkward than you're know, just having it here, say, or, or there. Anyway, those are my rationalizations, because there's a chance that the main reason I don't like the back draw is because it just seems too try hard, quite frankly. It just seems the kind of thing that you would do just to be different, you know, just to be special, to not do everything that everybody else does because it makes sense. No, 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 you, you, gotta, you gotta be different. It just, yeah, I'm biased like that. Everybody has their bias, as said, and um, maybe you can make better arguments in favor of carrying and drawing from the back that eliminates some of these issues. Whoa, I almost forgot to mention the exception that I hinted at earlier, where I do think it makes sense to wear a sword on your back. And that is in case of particularly large swords. You know, a great sword like this is just not really happening. Carrying it on the side, it would be extremely cumbersome. Uh, so in this case, if you have a specialized back scabbard that's partially open on the side so that you can draw it a little bit and then rotate it out, this would work quite nicely. And um, still not something that they did in history. For the most part, there are a few isolated instances where there seems to be some evidence of it being done. In a purely historical setting, this is still a solution looking for a problem because when would you carry a large sword like this? When you're going to war, in which case, Transportation is not that big of an issue. Uh, you might have a horse or there might be a cart carrying equipment or you might just accept that this is one of those things that you just have to carry. You know, along with your other equipment, you might carry it on the shoulder simply, you know, just like a pole arm. And there are historical depictions where they do just that. As opposed to pole arms, you can't really use a sword like a walking stick. Uh, that's the nice thing with a spear and, and many other pole arms. It basically, you just 
pretend it's a walking stick. And in fact, there are some historical depictions where somebody uses this to carry their baggage. Like this, for example, where the pack is suspended from the spear and you just use it as a tool to help carry things. The only situation in everyday life, in history that I'm aware of, where somebody would carry a great sword would be if you're a bodyguard and you carry a montante, for example, uh, which is shown in historical manuscripts, show you how to carry it, which is once again, not strapped to your back, but just, just carrying it in some way on your shoulder like this. However, in a fantasy scenario where you're an adventurer who insists on carrying such a huge sword, okay. In that case, having it on your back and accepting the fact that you won't be able to carry a backpack, you might just have a, another shoulder bag slung across the other side, or again, you might be traveling with a horse, things like that, then yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, thanks for listening to all this babbling. Hope you found it interesting or at least entertaining. Thanks for watching and let's end it with a quick claw.